Good morning. Hey, I'm here in uh, Ventura Harbor, which is uh, the harbor that I live at. And I'm on my way to go take a uh, walking tour of a 47 foot blue water yachts vagabond. It's offered for sale here by Charlotte Schmidt Yacht Brokerage. Uh, happens to be the same brokerage that I bought La Mer from. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, take a look in my videos. Uh, you'll see a walking tour I have for La Mer. But uh, I'm gonna take a look at this boat mainly because I'm interested in how other boats are built and how they're laid out and how they function in some of the key areas like the galley and the engine room and the head and that type of thing. So I thought I'd take a look at this boat and maybe some others down the road and just get a feel for the layout. And I thought this might be of interest to other boaters out there who might either be looking to buy a boat or are doing their own DIY project. So uh, anyway, we're almost there. So uh, come on, let's check it out. This is Jade Dragon, a 1986 Blue Water Yachts Vagabond 47. She's a full keel cutter catch with a clipper bow and was designed by William Garden, the famed naval architect from Canada. As you can see, this boat has a classic design with exquisite woodwork and beautiful lines. She was built at the Blue Water Yachts Boatyard in Taiwan, where they were known for their skilled craftsmanship and attention to detail. The Vagabonds are known for being stout, seaworthy cruisers. Stepping aboard, I get a sense of how comfortable this boat would be under sail. There are handholds everywhere and nice wide areas to walk on the deck. Jade Dragon originally had teak decks, but these were removed and replaced with non-skid. While I personally like the look of well-maintained teak decks, they take a lot of work to keep maintained and prone to leaking, so I think that the non-skid is a nice feature. As we move forward, again, you'll get a sense of how easy it is to maneuver on the deck. The path is nice and wide, and there's plenty of room, even when you have gear stowed on the deck. Also, the raised combing on the outer sides provide additional safety and comfort. As we approach the bow, we have the sturdy Samson post and windlass. At the head of the bowsprit, there is the foresail with roller furling, and the stay sail also has roller furling in addition to a self-tailing boom. I've personally never sailed with a stay sail boom, so not sure how functional they are. But as with just about everything else on a boat, there are pros and cons. Some people will swear by them and others feel that they are not necessary and take up space on the deck. On the pulpit, there are two anchors a 73-pound Vulcan and a 50-pound CQR, each with 400 feet of chain. This is the forward hatch with a plexiglass or Lexan top. And in the background there, you'll see that useful space around the mast where they're storing water and fuel containers. I think that's really great to keep the decks clear. Now we're moving aft on the port side towards the center cockpit. As we step up to the upper deck, there are these nice sturdy teak handrails. Most of us are used to probably having to grab onto the thin stainless steel lifelines, but I tell you, it sure feels nice to be able to hold onto something substantial. Teak is a lot more work to maintain, but I think it's worth it. Looking back towards the quarter deck, I think of all the parties one could have here. Also a great place to sun yourself while under sail without having to go too far away from the wheel, unlike going to the forward deck to lay out. Speaking of the wheel, here is the center cockpit. There is also plenty of space here for captain and crew. Now the electronics and gauges are a bit out of date and sparse, 
But to me, that's not such a bad thing. I had the same thing when I bought my boat and it allowed me to upgrade it with my choice of gear. There's plenty of room on the binnacle and cabin to add whatever electronics you desire. Now we get to the really good stuff. Okay, if you're a fan of the more modern condo-like interiors, then this boat is probably not for you. However, if you're like me and like the warm feeling and old world charm of dark wood, then you're going to love Jade Dragon. She's got wood for days and it's all in amazing condition. It's also very, very cozy. Now, I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, but boy, it sure makes me feel good. One of the main reasons why I fell in love with my boat, La Mer, is because she's got a ton of woodwork in the interior. Now, check this out. This is the kind of detail that you don't see in many modern boats. This piece of hand carved trim and jade inlays are probably where Jade Dragon got her name. I'm sure that there's a cool story here somewhere. There are several of these features throughout the boat. It's a really nice touch and makes you feel that you're sailing on a piece of history. This really shows you the skill and craftsmanship of the Blue Water Yachts boatyard. Over here on the port side, we have the dining table and settee. The table has these two leaves that fold out and you could probably get six, maybe eight people around the table and there's plenty of storage underneath. On the starboard side, you have the main salon with two settees. One of them pulls out to convert to a two-person sleeping berth, while the other can accommodate a single person. Again, very warm and cozy. A comfortable place to kick back and relax and watch some TV, listen to music, or enjoy a conversation with your crew and friends. Just to the left of the largest settee, there's a nook where it appears to have once been a diesel heating unit. My guess is that the current owners sailed mostly in the Southern Hemisphere, so didn't have the need for a heater. Going aft a bit, we have the sit-down nav station. As I mentioned earlier, the electronics on this boat are minimal and a bit outdated. In fact, the nav station does not have any visible electronic navigation equipment but there's plenty of room to upgrade here. Or you could just kind of go old school and use an old fashioned compass and star chart. Now this is pretty cool. Just aft of the nav station is a sea berth, which can also be used as a separate storage slash workshop area. Tons of storage and a nice long workbench. What I wouldn't give to have this on La Mer. I'm always having to do repair projects on my dining table, so having a space like this would be really convenient. Another thing to note here is the access panels to the bilge. There are panels like this throughout the boat, making it very convenient to run wiring, plumbing, or to track down those uh, pesky water intrusions that you get from time to time. To the right are the access doors to the engine compartment. The engine is a four cylinder diesel Volvo turbo with 90 horsepower. There's a 200 gallon fuel tank feeding the engine, which should provide pretty good range. There's a fair amount of room in the compartment to do routine maintenance. And while there's a lot going on in here, everything is really well organized. At the end of this hallway is a door here that leads directly to the shower and head that are part of the main stateroom. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But for now, let's continue moving forward to the V-Berth. The V-Berth is very spacious with lots of storage. And no surprise here, lots of rich, beautiful wood. There is a good amount of light from the overhead hatch and directly forward is access to the chain locker. On the starboard side is a deep and roomy hanging closet. Opposite of that is the wet head with a traditional hand pump toilet and a shower wand sink and mirror. Pretty standard there. Okay, let's go on back towards the galley. 
First off, I want to show you this great design feature. At first, I just thought this was decorative trim molding. But on closer look, these are actually grab rails. This is a perfect combination of form and function. All right, onto the galley. This is a traditional galley design with plenty of storage and sufficient counter space. There is a refrigerator freezer on the port side, as well as a force tent stove and oven. On the opposite side, is a double well stainless steel sink, and again, more storage and counter space. This would be a very comfortable and safe galley to cook in while underway. All right, on to the master stateroom. It goes without saying, but the stateroom has lots of wood and lots of storage, two things I would never tire of. We have another carved beam overhead and a hatch for light and ventilation. The bed is queen size, and I really like those transom windows that look out over the water. What a great way to wake up in the morning. Over here is an in-suite vanity with a sink. This is a really great feature for a couple as this gives an extra sink in addition to the sink in the master head just off to starboard. The master head sink and mirror are separate from the wet head which is a really cool feature. And here's the door that we saw earlier that leads to the sea berth. So that finishes my tour of Jade Dragon, a 47 foot vagabond. If you're interested in this boat, there is contact info for the broker in the description down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This is the first of what I hope will be many of these type of boat tours. Thank you and hope to see you soon. Cheers.